Hello, welcome to Conf42. Today I will be talking about modular approaches of structuring React and Redux apps and a little bit about me. My name is Sergey. I'm from Ukraine. I have been working as a web developer for about 10 years or more. And I worked with different technologies and platforms, but last time I worked mostly with front-end and with React. I'm really a fan of JavaScript, so uh, I participate in different events uh, and I write articles about it and also I conduct JavaScript courses sometimes. And also I like table tennis, fishing and traveling. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce a little bit uh, what into what we will be talking about today. And I will start from uh, talking a little bit why good structure of Redux application is important and about state management problem, problem at all. What is wrong with common approaches in Redux applications? We will check what is Dux and Redux is. Uh, what is Redux Toolkit and a little bit about testing of Duxes. Uh, what is the problem with state management? State management in modern uh, front-end applications is quite a common problem for different frameworks and libraries, but, but especially it's a problem in React ecosystem. I think that uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, the state management problem in React is uh, it's because we have different types of state. First of all, we have components local state. It's the simplest state and today uh, using hooks we can have a local state in functional components and also of course we can have local state in uh, components, uh, class-based components. Yeah. Uh, next type is components shared state and sometimes we need to have a data, some data that we need to display in different components and one of the easiest approaches that people usually use is uh, to lift up the data into a common parent and then pass this data via props. Uh, by the way, today uh, I think you heard about recoil library and uh, some people think today that for such types of state recoil can be a good one. Uh, maybe. Uh, by the way, uh, I had uh, some articles and presentations about recoil. Uh, just check it out in internet. Yeah, thank you. And uh, applications global state. Uh, it's a main type, yeah, I think, of the state in our React applications. And usually it can be an object and quite a big one that contains all the data of, from all our applications, application, and we use this data in different components, yeah. And I think that uh, this global state usually uh, can be splitted uh, to it contains uh, as well two main parts. It's a UI state and cache. UI state, it's a data that we use to configure our application. And it's something that we use a configuration for, for the look and feel like theme. Uh, and also it's a data that we display. And what about the cache? Uh, almost all our modern applications, they do API calls. And when we retrieve the data, usually we also store it. And, uh, and we need to call it cache because it's actually, actually a cache. And I think that most of the, develop, of most of the developers that work with Redux, uh, we all do such things, yeah, like uh, API calls and store the data into our uh, global state with all the rest of the data, yeah. And uh, 
right now a lot of developers started started to think that maybe we need to separate this uh, type of state, I mean cache, into separate, uh, maybe a separate object or separate uh, uh, state uh, area, and maybe even different uh, libraries can be used for different types of state. Uh, but today we will be talking about Redux and some people can say Redux in 2021. Uh, why? We have a lot of new stuff. Uh, do we really need Redux today? And I should say that we had several, uh, several times we had situations when something appeared and some people said, okay, so now we don't need Redux anymore. The same thing was with context API and I remember a lot of people said okay we don't need Redux anymore we have context API but they will run as we can see here yeah that context API uh, it was said last year that it it cannot replace uh, Redux and we can see here uh, we, we can see today, like here in the open base, uh, you can check this uh, open base website and they have these 10 best React State Management Libraries uh, article and uh, there you can see the list of uh, most popular uh, state management libraries in React and just check the numbers for Redux. Uh, so GitHub stars and weekly downloads, those, uh, those numbers are amazing, yeah. But in the same time, you can see that user rating is uh, not the highest, yeah. And uh, we all know that a lot of developers complain it a lot about Redux as well, but it's still very popular. Why? Why it's popular, yeah, and why? developers complain about it. I think that most problem uh, about Redux uh, that people usually say it's about its uh, boilerplate. Uh, yeah. But let's talk uh, about this a little bit later. Uh, at first, a small disclaimer. Uh, Redux, it's a part of our application. It's a part of the architecture. Uh, actually, it's the implementation of the Flux architecture, but today we are talking about the structuring of the application because we decided that we use Flux. Yeah? If we use Redux, then we use Flux architecture, but we mostly talk today about the structuring of the application. So, uh, what is the common problem of uh, uh, just standard React applications. Here we can see example of very popular, very common Re React Redux application. And here we can see that uh, all Redux artifacts, they are uh, spread it all over application into different folders. When we start our application, when application is small and we add Redux, uh, it looks quite good and uh, when we add Redux and such folders, we sometimes we can even think, oh, now my application looks professional, yeah. But later, when we need to maintain uh, and support such uh, project, uh, it can become a nightmare to support it because just imagine, yeah, when you need to add a new entity, you need to create. Uh, the same files over and over again in different folders. If you need to modify files, you need to go to those, those files in different folders. If you need to remove an uh, entity, you need to go to different folders and re remove different files. Yeah. So this approach scales very bad and uh, yeah, uh, it has a lot of problems. Uh, what we can do about this? First of all, I would like to recall that we have several approaches for structuring. It's a function first and feature first approaches. I think we all know about them. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, here I would like to add that sometimes uh, we can mix those approaches. Uh, and also one, uh, one very important moment 
that we need to think about our application on the long run. Yeah, so we need to imagine um, what happens if we switch uh, from React to another library, for example. Yeah, or if we uh, we will have maybe we will switch from React to React Native. Yeah, uh, then maybe we would be able to reuse uh, some parts of our application, and especially the state management. Uh, and that's why people started to think that maybe we need to separate state management from UI, and ideally it can be even it can be added into a shared library. Uh, that's why Eric Rasmussen, he started to think about problems of Redux. He also didn't like that we need to add a lot of files in different folders. Uh, and only because we need to import some actions or reducer. Yeah. Ideally, he thought that uh, it would be better to isolate the module. Yeah the uh, state management, our bundle. And uh, ideally, we even can uh, move this bundle into a shared library. And here, he created Duxes. Dux, it's a one file that contains all Redux artifacts. I mean, it contains actions, reducers, action creators, selectors, saga, and all of that. Yeah. So everything that you have around one reducer that you need for one reducer, you have in one files. Even tests can be added directly in this file. <clears throat> Sometimes, uh, at first, for some people, it it looked very scary. But for small applications, when we don't have a lot of code for those artifacts, that idea was awesome. When I first uh, look at this, I like at this, and I tried in some of my application, applications, and I also proposed this approach to my colleagues, but they afraid to try this at first. Uh, Duxis has some rules, yeah, and when you follow those rules, then you will be able to import uh, actions and reducers. By the way, why Dux? Yeah, Eric explained it that like he thought that Java has jars and beans, Ruby has gems. So he just suggested to call uh, those reducer bundles as duxes or dux uh, as his last syllable yeah, of redux. Uh, how we can use duxes? So when we have everything in one file and we export only uh, reducers and only actions, so when we need reducers, we still can just import them yeah, for, di directly from one DAX. Uh, the same for actions. When we need actions, we also can import them from the, the same DAX. DAC. Uh, and if, if you need anything else, it's quite flexible. So you also can add uh, uh, can export uh, another uh, artifacts that you need or uh, actions yeah, uh, from the doxies and then you can import them. Uh, here I, I added a few links to different implementation of doxies. Uh, today maybe they can look uh, a little bit outdated, but uh, Today I'm talking about Duxes and I will be talking about Reduxes now. Uh, just to to go through the history, yeah, of the Redux evolution, and Dux was was the first attempt, as for me, yeah, to change the rules of the game. And after that, Redux. Uh, 
appeared. And the difference between DAX and Redux is that uh, DAX's modular approach is nice, but it doesn't work when we have a lot of code in the same file. Then it can be a problem to support such uh, file. So some people, they proposed to split uh, the code from the DAX into se several files. So here we can see example of the uh, Redux DAC. <clears throat> By the way, the name was also just uh, created that, uh, to sound like Redux. Yeah? And here we can see that in uh, one DAC folder, uh, DAC is one of the entities of our application like user. Yeah? Uh, we can have different files in this folder, like actions, operations, reducers, selectors, test types, utils, and we export everything, anything that we need from this folder via index file. Uh, Redux also has some rules uh, that you, ne you need to follow. So, uh, like DAC contains concepts, uh, or I call them artifacts, yeah, that are related only to one entity, like product card and all of that. It's one DAC, yeah. So we should have index files that exports everything, yeah. And uh, we split uh, reducers, selectors, actions, and all of that. Uh, we keep them into in se uh, separate files. And also, this folder can uh, contain tests, of course. Uh, here we can see example of types. Uh, they can be the same or similar on, re on DAXs uh, in Redaxes. Uh, but of course, in DAXs, uh, they are added in the same file and Redux in the separate file. So we can have actions, operations, uh, Reducers, reducers. By the way, it's the main part of the re, uh, Redux. Uh, that's why all this approach, uh, DAX and Redux, they were built around reducers. As I said, uh, uh, reducers bundles. So DAXs are actually reducer bundles. Yeah. Also, we can have selectors. By the way, I like to use reselect, I hope you do, <laughs> with Redux. Uh, and so, yeah, and we of course have index file where we import and export uh, all the stuff that we need in uh, other parts of our application. <clears throat> and about DAX tests for Redux and DAX, uh, we can easily add tests directly in the DAX folder and then all tests that are related to our Redux artifacts, uh, they, they are bundled toge together with the code that we test and it's very scalable. So when we need to add a new entity again, we add all the code and we add the tests in the same folder and when we need to remove uh, one entity, we just remove DAC and at all. We remove DAC with all artifacts and with tests of, as well. And finally, we have a Redux Toolkit. Redux Toolkit, I think it's an amazing thing. And as for me, Redux Toolkit is a logical continuation of this saga, <laughs> I mean story, with DAXs. I think that Redux uh, Toolkit slices that we have, they implement exactly the idea to bundle all the stuff that we need for one uh, reducer in one place. Uh, Redux Toolkit, it has very good documentation, a lot of different articles and all of that, so you can investigate. And I think you already use it, or most of you already use this. So I just want to remind a few things that Redux Toolkit has. Uh, Redux Toolkit has Configure Store. It's a helper that uh, or wrapper for Create Store. Uh, it helps us uh, to create store very easily. 
uh, with one or two, just a few lines of code. And by default, it supports Redux Thunk, but uh, usually I use Sagas, so you can easily configure a Sagas as well. And also it can, uh, supports Redux DevTools extension. Uh, it has create reducer, uh, function. Uh, it has uh, create action, create slice, and some additional utilities. Uh, yeah, just a small summary. Redux, Redux, and uh, Redux Toolkit. They, as for me, they use the same pattern or approach uh, for uh, improving the structure of the uh, Redux application. React Redux, I call it, yeah. Um, Feature-based separation of the Redux code is more flexible and allows more opportunities for scaling when Kedua is growing. Uh, but if we are talking about uh, feature-based separation of the Redux code, not when we are talking about all React application, so very important thing is to move uh, all state management aside, yeah. So, um, for example, sometimes I just create really create Redux uh, folder, and then I place all DUXs here, there. Yeah. So Redux Toolkit provides useful tools and best practices, and really it is. So uh, I think uh, many of you heard that. Uh, for Angular, when people say about Angular, even about Vue, uh, Vue.js, that uh, when newcomers start to work with, with those frameworks, they can easily do the correct structure, yeah, because they don't have a lot of options. But with React and Redux, we had a uh, very flexible so yeah approaches so we could implement anything so newcomers uh, could create not very optimal solutions and structures but redux toolkit is exactly uh, quite opinionated tool yeah for structuring uh, redux uh, applications and by the way how do you structure your redux app please share uh, by the way, here I added a bunch of links uh, to the uh, articles or comments that I shared in my talk. And also I added a link to my repository and to, uh, to the uh, repository that I created, especially for Con42. And uh, there I added uh, a quite simple, basic uh, Redux application. And also I created different branches where I refactored uh, the basic application with different approaches. Uh, at first it's uh, uh, improved re Redux approach, then with Duxes, with Reduxes and uh, with Redux uh, toolkit. So if you would like, you can check uh, that repository. I have just uh, quite basic stuff there, but I plan to improve this uh, repository for better user experience. Yeah, so you can investigate and compare. And thank you. <laughs>